Hello friends, I am Adrian Menezes from Mumbai, India. Good morning and welcome to Pathways of Hope. Today's Gospel is taken from Luke chapter 4 verses 16 to 30. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I'll stop here and give us a little bit of my reflection on this part and then we'll continue with the next. Jesus in this proclamation reveals himself as the Son of God who is bringing the kingdom of God to us. This revelation seems to come very close to the start of his public ministry. He has just spent 40 days in the desert, in the wilderness and is filled with the Spirit as he comes out of that. He has begun to preach the good news. And he goes to his hometown of Nazareth, where people know him. This sometimes can be the hardest thing for us to do, to be vulnerable with the people who are closest to us, to share the gospel with them, because they know who we were and might bring up maybe some of the stupid things that we did, or maybe still do. <laughs> there might be people who might mock us for believing or for being Christian. Jesus doesn't care of all, about all of these things, but he goes to his hometown of Nazareth. Why does he do this? He is trying to give us access to the Father. We who had lost access to the Father because of sin are being made part of the kingdom of God again. And Jesus really desires this for us. He desires for us to believe in him, and for those who believe, we will join with him and reign with him in glory. His proclamation is that the Lord God has favor on his people and is looking on them with love. He is proclaiming freedom and recovery of sight for those who have been blind or in darkness. When people start doubting and saying that Jesus is just a carpenter's son, you know, he says that a prophet is not accepted in his hometown. And he gives examples to show uh, where this has been true in, in verses 23 to 27. And this reminds me of the prophet Samuel who goes to the house of Jesse to anoint a king for Israel. And he looks at the different sons of Jesse and he says, oh, this person might be good, this person might be good, but God finally chooses David. But when he does that, God tells Samuel that man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. This means that we need to see things with our eyes of faith. If we are attentive to the world, we cannot be attentive to God. And if we are not attentive to God, we can miss important things that God is doing or saying to us. The people of Nazareth were not seeing with their eyes of faith and they were stuck on the fact that Jesus is a carpenter's son. Nothing good can come out of Nazareth, people said, and definitely nothing good from a carpenter's house. They make this judgment really quickly because they're attentive to the world. The world preaches power, status, money, fame, when we're attentive to the world's preaching, we might miss something big that Jesus wants to reveal to us. The closing verses of this passage say, When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through the midst of them, he went away. 
The power of God, my friends, and the goodness of God cannot be conquered, not by man, not by Satan, who tempts, not by the world. And God wants to share this power and this freedom with us, if only we believe. He wants us to experience Him as a Father. He wants to be our Father and to allow us to live as His children. This process will require some purification, some training. The wilderness time, which Jesus Himself experiences, He went in the, into the wilderness to prepare and He invites us into the wilderness and beyond into the Kingdom of God. Can we let our eyes be open today, allowing Jesus to purify our hearts, align it to God's will? Are we able to pray in Jesus' words, not my will, but yours be done? This is the kingdom. This is the power of God. This is the spirit that God wants to give us. And we can be truly alive if we believe in him. Friends, if you've been blessed by this reflection, please share it with your family and friends. God bless you all.